I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm walking on the outskirts of town, getting some good exercise in some bright sun on a beautiful day. This is great. I've had a good day. I have enough time to get outside and actually get some fresh air for you guys. And I got the question from one of the viewers from Martin Bowen, who is one of our fanatical followers, and he wanted to know about who is able to buy property in Nicaragua, because it's not been clear and we haven't talked about it enough on the channel. So we're going to cover that today. I'm actually on the outskirts of Leon, making a sojourn out into the countryside. I have not done this walk in a while, and I'm really enjoying the chance to get out and stretch my legs and walk a little bit faster than I normally do outside of the city. When I'm in the city, it feels like you have to really slow down because of the sidewalks and everything's uneven and there's traffic and you gotta cross roads. When you get out in the country, yeah, everything's wide open, so you can just walk a lot faster, the road's smoother. It's nice for those of us who like to walk, but living where I do, for those who don't, I live out towards Ponaloya. When you do that, it's a little bit hard to get to somewhere new. Uh, the distance to go until you get to another road, another road, is really far. It's something that's very different than the United States. But we're here to talk about who can own property, who can buy property in Nicaragua. And this is, I guess, counterintuitive. A lot of people are convinced that you need a lot more than you do. And we have talked about this on the channel, but we've never focused on it, right? We just mentioned it mostly in passing in other contexts. So we want to drill into this because people really have a lot of concerns about it. And you really don't need to, but of course, you got to do your due diligence and make sure that you're getting this right, because obviously you don't want problems and you don't want to go down a long path of purchasing or attempting to purchase and then find out that you're going to have a problem. So who's able to buy property in Nicaragua? So this one's actually pretty easy. Under the current property regime here in Nicaragua, because there is so much property on the market, because there's not a contentious market where people are fighting over property, they're really interested in increasing sales. So as it has been in the past, they are retaining the policy that anybody, foreign or domestic, is able to purchase property. What this means, it means you do not need citizenship, absolutely don't need citizenship. You don't even need residency. And in fact, you do not need to be an active tourist. Meaning, so an active tourist would be someone who is coming into the country on a tourist visa, such as me, and then staying here for some amount of time. So we have the long-term -ter tourists, like me, who've been here through multiple renewals. We are checking in with the government, like with the migration office, uh, and they know where we are, they know where we live, uh, we, we possibly own a business, we do a lot of things. So that's like really heavily invested, more than a tourist, but still technically a tourist. That's where I and a lot of people fall. But you could be a regular tourist where you have not done renewals, you have not have any kind of uh, connection to the country other than just liking it and hanging out for a little while, uh, like you would if you're on holiday, right? You fly in from Canada and you're spending two weeks in the country, that would be a typical tourist or a passive tourist. Uh, but you don't even have to be that. You don't have to be in country. You could be a person who has never visited Nicaragua, which is a lot of my audience. You could be a person who has uh, no uh, paperwork done with Nicaragua. You've never filed uh, for a visa, you've never filed for uh, uh, permission to enter, anything of the sort, you could call up someone that you know, let's just say you learn about someone, you, you're talking in my channel and you're talking to someone down there and they're like, hey, I've got a, I've got a house here in, in uh, you know, Heroes and Martyrs of, of Sutiava and I'd like to sell it to you, which uh, don't fall for that because you can see there are no houses here. No, I'm kidding. There are, but there's not where I am. And uh, I'll actually show you. We're actually coming up on the Heroes and Martyrs sign which I couldn't see when I said it, uh, which just, I like to prove that I actually know the neighborhoods here. Cause people always talk to me and, and I'll be like, yeah, over in this Rapardo, this barrio, whatever. And, and even the locals are like, what are you talking about? And then I walk and walk and walk, or I drive them somewhere. And I turned around and I say, see, there's the sign. Just read the signs, they're everywhere that say where things are. Now this one's a little bit silly compared to most, but it's a very small Rapardo. And it's a beautiful area, actually. I don't know why more people don't choose to live out here. If you're looking for kind of country living, there's not a lot on the market, obviously, but it would be easy to potentially, we've got a bread delivery going by. That's what that is. If you see those guys are almost always delivering bread of some sort. And I'm almost gonna get hit by a motorcycle because I'm not paying attention. 
that's how Nicaraguan I've become. Uh, and so there's it's a lot of wide open countryside out here in Heroes and Martyrs of Sutiava, but it's absolutely beautiful. It's pretty quiet other than the few motorbikes going on. Uh, it's mostly universities who own out here. So there's a lot of areas that aren't gonna get construction. There's like baseball fields, soccer fields, an arboretum. It's a nice area if you don't want too many services nearby. But you can get into the city really quickly and the roads are really nice. If you see, this is a pavered road. So it's a great spot to be. Anyway, I digress. Uh, so you don't even need to be a tourist. If you just met someone down in the comments and they said, I got a, I got a house out here, would you be interested? And you work out a deal. You can do everything without having ever visited the country, with having no paperwork, without registering with Nicaragua whatsoever. Now, of course, you're going to want an agent here on the ground, and it would be foolish to buy a house you've never seen in a foreign country. Though That would be really dumb. Let's just start there. That's really dumb. Don't do that. But if you decided, as a thought experiment, you found a really affordable house, and you decided just to do it because you want to prove me wrong, you're able to do that. So because you're able to do that under those conditions, there is essentially nobody anywhere who's not able to buy a house in Nicaragua, at least that they don't fall into a category who's allowed to buy a house. Because a lot of people assume that you need to be a resident. And it makes sense. Most countries require residency and possibly even uh, uh, citizenship in order to own property. So here you, you don't have that kind of restriction at all. So we answered that question way too quickly. Let's dive into a little bit more. A lot of people assume, like so many countries, well, okay, so anybody can buy property, but foreigners are probably restricted from buying on the beach. Is that correct? No. So there's really no portion of the country where a foreigner is not able to invest or, or to uh, buy an existing house or build their own. There are going to be a little bit of limitations that I'm going to talk about, but it's not things like beaches or mountains or city or anything like that. Any topographical uh, elements that, uh, that exist, you're, you're able to buy there. Now, it's worth noting the beaches specifically, and it's possible that there are other places like this, but I'm unaware of any. So I'm going to say with some caveats, I believe with some buffer of hedging. I believe, it is my impression, that this is exclusively uh, relegated to a few beach areas. But there are some beach areas, and Las Panitas is a prime example of this, where the majority of the beach, but only the beach, is restricted in how it can be purchased, and it is a lease area, not a deeded area. We've talked about this in another episode, so I'm not gonna dig into this too much, but that is uh, that is a, a different type of ownership, and you can argue that it's not truly ownership, it's a lease, but really here, lease is a form of ownership. It's not a big thing. You would think of it as ownership. It applies in all the ways you would think of as ownership, and it isn't that foreigners are restricted to leases. It's all people are restricted to leases. You could be local, you could be indigenous, because those leases are held by the indigenous community. Even if you're indigenous, you cannot own there. You would lease just from your own community, as opposed to, like me, leasing from someone else's community. There is a storm drain overflowing here. We had a really good rain yesterday, so I'm assuming something has gone wrong and there's a blockage and the storm drain is overflowing. So I'm just gonna show this because that's what the, the sound is going on. You prob probably can't really hear, but they're clearly like getting ready to work on it and something's wrong. But the entire street is gonna be flooded as I walk down. So we're gonna show this so you know what's happening. So the whole street has this water flowing down it. They need to do something about this. Anyway, so, you, so as a foreigner, you have the same restrictions on the beach or mountains or anything like that as anyone else would. You're not different than the locals. You're just, everyone has the same restrictions there. So you can think about that however you want, but as a foreigner, as a tourist, as a resident, none of that matters. They don't classify those things uh, as far as that goes. It doesn't, it doesn't apply in any way. So you're free to do whatever, uh, uh, whatever anyone else that is local would be allowed to do. There's a path here running along the Arboretum, so I'm taking that instead of the road. It's just a little bit different. The road is right over there, but uh, Buenas tardes. This is the Ar Arboretum of Unan. You can uh, pay to go in. It's a tree museum, um, and so it's part of the uh, the forestry school here at the university. Uh, the university itself is located on the far side of the city, but this is where they keep the Arboretum because it's more of a forested area out here on the west side of the city compared to the east, even though you would think, looking at a map, you'd guess the east would be more, but that's more farmland, and uh, the west is a bit more wild heading towards the beach. It just got developed later. So I did say that there were some restrictions, and there are. Foreigners do not have 100% of the same rights as uh, locals. However, I've never met anyone to whom this would apply. 
Uh, and it's as desired, right? I've never met a person who would desire to buy a house in a place where this would kick in. However, it, it could be you. There are situations where you could imagine it being you. I just haven't met a person that it applied to. So where is it that you are restricted? I don't know the exact number. I know it's between six and 16 kilometers. It's probably six. It's really not very far. Directly, the, the distance off of a foreign border. So that is distance off of the Costa Rican border or distance off of the Honduran border. These are the only borders that Nicaragua has physically. And so it is only those two situations, the extreme Southern portion of the country as it runs along Costa Rica and the extreme Northern portion of the country as it runs along the Honduran border, uh, a foreigner is not allowed to own property in that zone without permission, right? So uh, could you get permission? I have no idea. I don't know if that would be like super easy and they'd be like, oh yeah, who cares? Uh, that we just want to check, right? Or if they'd be like, no, 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 you need so much permission that it's not even like a thing. I have no idea. I don't know anyone who would ever want to do it. Both cases are locations that are sure they're beautiful, but they're, they're pretty darn remote. And if what you want is to be really remote, you have so much very similar space in each case where you don't have to be quite that close to the border. And of course, if you're doing anything legitimate, being super close to a border is generally a negative for you, just because in that direction, you can't really do anything. You can't travel easily because you're not allowed to cross that space. So for most people living directly on a border is super annoying, unless you live right near a crossing, which of course, typically you have, you know, police and border control and military or whatever, right at border crossings. So it's very hard to own a house super close to that anyway. Um, and if you do want to be relatively close, you can just go six kilometers or whatever down the main road and buy a house there. And then you can get to the border in, I don't know, 10 minutes. Not a big deal if that's something you need to do all the time. If you really want to, you know, live close to a crossing point, like it's still an option. You just can't be absolutely on top of the crossing point. So uh, it really isn't a big deal. And potentially, there's some beautiful spaces right along the border and maybe you could get a great view or something. But we're going to wait for this truck. I'm gonna swing around and just show. We showed this a long time ago, but this is the Arboretum's entrance here. So this is the, the prices, the, the tariffs to get in as the entrance. So that's, that's where you would go if you wanna check out the Arboretum. And the Arboretum is where the nice road ends. And now we become a nasty dirt road for a little while. And this is where the, the, flowing, the overflowing uh, storm drain turns into like a river. And it's like a part of the ecosystem here. It's very funny, uh, but so there is this one minor restriction. Uh, but if you look at a map and you look at those areas, you'll see that there really are no towns in that area. And if you wanted farmland or something, you have just tons of options. Um, and if you really needed farmland that stretched into those zones, you have options, right? You can get a local to own it and you lease it. Uh, you could talk to the government and try to get permission. Maybe you own empty land there, but your house is outside of the six or 10 kilometer zone, whatever. Like there's, there's flexible options if that's really something, but I, I can't imagine who that's going to apply to given the amount of great land available and how undesirable those areas are. I realize if you're looking for the absolute cheapest thing. And of course, the reasons that they're concerned about that is that controlling the borders is very important. And if you have foreigners investing on the border, that's how you end up with people in, in a really good position to easily smuggle things over the border and to potentially move themselves in and out between different countries uh, without uh, without anyone overseeing what's going on. So it's it's really common in a lot of places that you, you can't live uh, directly along a border. So not, not really a surprise, nothing special there. But that's really the only caveat. You can basically buy anywhere in the country at any time by anybody. It's incredibly uh, open and unrestrictive in that sense. Uh, so you really don't need to worry about too many of those things. Of course, any given property, you're going to want to check with a lawyer and make sure you do all your due diligence and make sure all your paperwork is in a row. And all of those things are completely crazy. You don't want to be, you know, completely not visiting the country. You don't want to be buying in silly places normally. Uh, there's going to be exceptions to everything, right? You, you can imagine scenarios where, you know, you have family or close friends and they're like, and this actually happened to us. So, so I guess, I guess I get it. 
What happened with us is because of COVID and because my wife and I and my kids had lived in Nicaragua, because I had come down and spent extra time, because my business partner, Paul, had spent time in Costa Rica, but not Nicaragua. Uh, during COVID, we made the decision that, we, or before COVID really, we made the decision that Nicaragua was where we were going to be moving to. Uh, and because of COVID, we weren't able to come in and actually spend time here while going through that process. Uh, and because of those things, we fell into a situation where Paul was actually making the move to Nicaragua sight unseen. He had never actually been here and he was going to uh, buy property and move, uh, move, begin the process of becoming a resident from afar uh, without ever having visited, without ever having been a tourist, without ever having spoken to Nicaragua in any way or interacted with it. So that is a case where that was going to happen. Um, and we did end up buying a place sort of, and then the deal fell through, but all of that was moving forward under those conditions where at least he was a tourist who had never been here. So he wasn't even a tourist in any way. He was completely a foreigner and that was no problem at all. So that's, uh, that's all very important as an example that even those extreme cases that I'm saying are completely ridiculous, and it was ridiculous, could happen. You can imagine situations where maybe that would, where would play out depending on what your needs are. So yes, if you're in that scenario, you've got family, friends who wanna be here, you have a, maybe your, your, your brother has been living in Nicaragua and he's like, you gotta move here. Look, I found the perfect house. You should just buy it, it's cheap. And then someday you can move and, and you're sure you wanna live here and you don't need to come check it out. Then great, you have that option, right? Or maybe you came as a child and you remember it and it's just right, right you have those options. So generally they're silly, and the reason that they're they're silly is because you really do want to know what you're getting into when you do something like buy a house. But I understand everyone has a different scenario and everyone's affected by different things. And some people just are just like, look, I, I know really certainly that I want to buy a place. And, and OK, those options are open to you. So Nicaragua is great in that way that you really the, the number of restrictions you have are just tiny. It's worth noting that you also have the option of forming a company in Nicaragua, even if you don't live here. So if you wanted to, for example, buy a house as a private person, you may do so. But if you wanted to buy a house or a property or farm or whatever, as a business, you also have the right to do so. Now, I do not know if a foreign company is allowed to buy property in Nicaragua. I'm going to guess that the answer is no, but I'm purely guessing. And I'm surprised, and you're probably surprised, that I don't know anything about this, but I honestly don't. Uh, I've never heard of someone wanting to do this. I've never heard of someone trying to do this. And so I really, I can't tell you anything about it. But I'm going to guess no. However, a foreign company can form a local company and then oh, we have a chicken. The funniest things, you get these little tiny dinosaur so sounds all over the place in Nicaragua and it's loose chickens on the side of the road just foraging and you're like, there's a little tiny fuzzy dinosaur over there. Uh, so um, if, you're, uh, if you're a private person and live in, we'll just say Canada, or you're a private business and you exist in, we'll say Canada, uh, and you want to buy property in Nicaragua, I know that as a human, you're allowed to do it directly. As a company, maybe, I mean, ask. Uh, but in either case, you're allowed to form a company in Nicaragua and use that to buy property, regardless of whether you've ever been here or all those things. All the same freedoms uh, exist as far as forming a company when you've never been here. So uh, that does come up some, that some people are just interested in doing it that way. Uh, I would say, in general, the amount that foreigners want to form a company to buy property is generally more than it is advisable to do. Does that make sense? We have a tendency, especially as North Americans, to use incorporation as a really standard mechanism for a lot of things, and in the US and Canada, that makes total sense. But the way things work in Nicaragua, it still may make sense, but it doesn't make sense as often. In the US, we do it very casually because it's so easy to form companies and we use them as just like part of the United States mechanism for things is they built a lot of laws and tax structures and property protections and stuff around incorporation as a mechanism for that. And Nicaragua did not. Nicaragua built a legal system around it, around personal ownership instead of corporate ownership. And it's just a different approach. But it often throws off North Americans who are a little bit confused because they're so used to the system in North America. And, and it took us years to really kind of get over this mindset because we're, we're business people in the United States. And so we're used to the idea of, oh, we're gonna do something, form a corporation, have a corporation buy it. Like we do this all the time, drop of a hat, no, no brainer. That's how you handle things. And, and in Nicaragua, while 
easily you want to have a company that's totally viable, 100% we're supportive of maybe that's something you want to do, just think that, oh wait, there's a lot of cases where you're going to feel like you want to do that and you may not want to. You may be allowed to, and if you go to a lawyer and say, I want to form a corporation, that's not asking a question. That's, get, that's you know, I'd like to buy a service you offer. Okay, we'd like to sell it to you, right? Instead, pay for a good lawyer to give you some advice. This is what I want to do in the end. I want these results, these goals. Do I get that better by buying something personally? Should I form a corporation to do it, right? Get advice from someone who knows the current laws, the current prices of, of all that process, and will work with you through it, and you'll be in much better shape. Uh, make sure you're not bringing assumptions with you. That's the danger that we got into, right? We brought a lot of assumptions from North America. We told our lawyers what we wanted to do. It was all legal. So they're like, okay, but it turned out to be foolish. Even as far as in which departmental we wanted to incorporate, we got that wrong too. That one was less our fault. That was more happenstance, but all that kind of stuff, you want a lawyer overseeing it just as you would in the United States. Just be aware that you're very likely to be bringing some assumptions with you that are very likely to be at least a little bit skewed, not completely incorrect. Now there's a danger that comes with all this freedom, and I want to point this out. Because it's so easy and so open and so legal for you as someone who has only just looked into Nicaragua remotely, or maybe that you have visited temporarily, maybe you came two years ago, you have a vague idea of what you want, it makes it really tempting for local resources to offer to sell you things, business ideas, homes, property to develop, and present it as a really good deal, and oh, you need to jump on this. And with you not being here, it's really easy for a lot of things to go wrong, including simply convincing you to buy something that maybe doesn't really exist, maybe doesn't exist at the price point uh, that they're presenting it, that maybe doesn't have exactly the features that they're saying. There's just a lot to go wrong, assuming that the transaction goes through and you're actually successful, because that can go wrong too. It is a really popular uh, way to prey on foreigners who are interested in Nicaragua who are really worried about uh, the prices going up, they're worried about uh, having a plan B, a place to go in case things go wrong in wherever they live now, uh, that they just want the assurance of owning a property, whatever. They have a tendency to be very emotional about how they look at property. Humans, just in general, tend to be emotional about property. And so it is really, really powerful to leverage this ability for absolutely anybody under any circumstance to buy property or homes or businesses in Nicaragua compared to other places. And so it becomes a very big market here to go after people and try to convince them to buy property that they've never seen, that they know nothing about, that they don't know how they will get to, that they don't know what the taxes are, that they don't know what the liabilities are, they don't know if there's a lien, they don't know if the bank is involved, they don't know if it's a lease or a deed, and they know that you don't have the resources in 99% of cases to check up on things. You can't send someone you trust to go look at it. You don't have a lawyer you've worked with for a long time. You can't go look at the property yourself. You can't evaluate the prices. You can't check with the Alcadia. There's all these things that you would normally do trivially and, and give yourself a lot of protection. And they know you don't have those. So if they can get you to be emotional and say, well, I really want this property and I can't take the time to go down and, and actually deal with it in person. And I can't take the time to do my due diligence, but I'm gonna lose this deal. There's no deal. There is no deal like that, right? This is how they prey on people. And it is so famous here in Nicaragua that it must be like, I don't know, a quarter to a half of all sales that go to foreigners are somehow done in this way. Some amount of don't come down and check on things, don't do your due diligence. You know, we have a deal for you. You gotta jump on it now. And people do it left and right. And I realize saying that, we also say that no one buys property here. This is over the long, over years, even when things were good and people were buying property, they still pulled this all the time. And it's why we have so many property problems today is that there are so many things that were purchased by people. They had no idea that they were buying an undeveloped development. They had no idea they were buying an abandoned lot. They had no idea they were buying something that would never be connected to water supply or whatever, or that they were getting something in the wrong spot. All kinds of problems. People don't know because this has been an ongoing thing. Because Nicaragua makes it so easy, they, the problem is we call it the rope problem in business, right? Or in, or in a lot of things. 
right? If you're going to find people who are diligent, smart, dedicated, want to do the right thing, you want to get the best people, you give them rope because they're going to climb out or where they're going to scale whatever mountain they need to get over. But the problem is when you give out rope without checking with people, yes, the people who you can't tell are highly skilled and will use it in good ways benefit. But the people who will just hang themselves won't, they'll hang themselves. And so what you find is Nicaragua errs on the side of it's it's up to you, do whatever you want. If you succeed, great, good for you. If you fail, we just gave you the tools to succeed. It's your job to do it. There's fewer safeties on society down here. And so this is an area where a lot of foreigners have hung themselves, you know, uh, <laughs> figuratively, uh, by, by jumping in and saying, Nicaragua gives me the power. And they're used to places like the United States where there's all this oversight. And they're like, you can't afford this, or this is not what you think it is. We're not going to let you buy this. There's all these regulations that make it really difficult to make and move things, but they protect you against yourself from yourself pretty heavily. Here, you can, everything's cheaper, everything moves faster. There's so much more flexibility, but that comes at a price. And that price is there isn't a huge government department sitting around going, we think you're making foolish moves and we're not gonna let you do it. If you wanna be foolish, you're totally allowed to. And they don't know, are you a rich person who's just throwing money around because it's like, whatever, I don't care. Or is this your whole life savings that you've been duped out of? They don't know, and it's not their job to know. It's, it, you shouldn't be investing in a foreign country if you haven't done your due diligence and you haven't put in the time and you can't risk the things. If you're a billionaire and you wanna risk $50,000 on a silly whim in Nicaragua, by all means, don't come down, throw money at it, it doesn't matter. But if this is your retirement and it matters and you gotta be careful, the last thing you can do is become emotional. The last thing you can do is let people prey on that because they will and they do constantly and entire markets exist for this. So be wary, all of this freedom comes with the freedom for you to accidentally shoot yourself in the foot, basically. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, that would be amazing. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, hit that like, do the subscribe thing, share it on social media, watch another video after this, just let it play onto the, whatever it recommends. That'd be fantastic. And I will see all of you tomorrow afternoon because we now do the 4 p.m. thing.